Let's talk about the difference between this mass-produced store-bought leather belt versus this one-of-a-kind handmade leather belt. Before we go on, this video is for educational purposes only. I am by no means trying to put down any other companies or brands out there. I just want to talk about the key differences that separate a belt like this from a belt like this. So let's go compare them. Let's start off talking about this mass-produced belt. Now, somehow this belt ended up in my grocery pickup, so I decided to make this video since I am a leather worker. Let's talk about the leather first and foremost. This belt is made of genuine leather. Let's talk about that term. That term can be very misleading. Most of the time on your belts, you will see something like this where it says genuine leather. Now, this belt technically is made out of leather, but that term does not disclose whether it is top grain, full grain, or what kind of leather it is. It just means that it has just enough leather in it to be considered leather. Genuine leather does not mean that this is a high quality belt. You can see that this piece of leather is extremely thin. And when it comes to Western style belts like this particular one, you'll see these floral designs or other designs on them. Do not get this confused with hand tooling. This is what is called embossed leather. So as you can tell, it is just a repeat pattern. Nothing ever changes. It's completely the same. It is not very deep impressions. It's literally the way they do it is it's just a giant stamp that is rolled across this to leave these impressions. It is completely different from actually hand carving and tooling designs. So again, do not get embossed leather confused with actual hand tooled leather because there is a big difference. And once again, I don't want to make it sound like I'm just hating on these belts because sometimes this is all someone might need. They don't need anything fancy or custom or maybe this is all they can afford at that time in their life. I used to wear belts like this, believe it or not. I never even knew that handmade leather or hand tooled belts or anything like that even existed until I was an adult and right before I started actually doing leather work myself. I was completely ignorant to that industry so again this is not to put anybody down it's just the way it is when it comes to price on belts like these you're generally going to be able to find them i would say anywhere from 20 30 dollars to maybe 60 or 70 dollars depending on the brand and where you find them at i would say you might get if you're wearing this every single day a year maybe two years of use out of it before it starts really just stretching and warping and falling apart if you don't wear them very often, maybe on the weekends, and you might get longer use out of them. But again, just remember that this is not the best leather that you can get, and this belt is not meant to be used for a long period of time. It is meant to just be kind of thrown away. The society that we live in today is just kind of buy it, throw it away, get another one. And so again, just remember that there are some big differences when it comes to belts like this compared to the next belt that I'm about to show you that I personally built. So once again, I did build this belt, so yes, I probably have a biased opinion towards it, but I'm just trying to explain the differences as best as I can to you guys. The type of leather that this belt is built from is Herman Oak Full Grain Vegetable Tanned Leather. In my opinion, Herman Oak Leather is some of the best leather on the market. It is full grain leather that comes from cattle that was raised in the United States, and the leather itself is tanned here in the United States. This belt is considerably thicker than the other belt. It has a lot more body and stability to it, and that's because this is a double layered belt. Handmade belts aren't always necessarily double layered, but I build my belts double layered just to get that maximum durability out of them. I like to use a 9-10 ounce body and line them with a 3-4 ounce liner, so my belts come out to around a quarter of an inch. And as we start looking at the designs, you can tell that there is a big difference. The impressions are a lot more deep and crisp and deliberate. Nothing is ever exactly the same. And the way that I build my belts is I never use repeating patterns. There's nothing wrong with repeating patterns, but I personally hand draw all of these designs with a pencil directly onto the leather before I carve and tool it. So that ensures every single time I build a project, it is going to be one of a kind. It's unique. There won't be another belt like that anywhere in the entire world. When you're buying from small handmade shops, the prices are going to be different and more than likely more expensive. Even on just a plain belt, the prices on a handmade belt, especially if they're using higher quality leather, higher quality tools, the price is going to go up. When you start getting into intricate tool belts like this and custom orders, the price goes even higher. I personally charge $450 for a belt like this and I know that it is expensive but like I said this belt is one of a kind. When I build custom belts I make them to where you will never be able to find a piece of leather like that exactly like that anywhere in the entire world. 
the floral work, there are similar structures and there might be similarities between this belt and another belt that I build, but nothing will ever be exactly the same. I take pride in that. That's just personal preference. Not everybody does that. You can do it however you want. I also understand that not everybody can afford a custom leather belt like this. This is, at the end of the day, a luxury item, and you might not need this. You might just need something plain or simple to get you through the day or get you through an event. But if you are in the market for something like this, you need to understand that all of these differences I'm explaining to you are what make this belt considerably more expensive than just your regular old store-bought belt. This is a blank piece of scrap Herman Oak that I had laying around. This is what this belt looked like before all of this happened. So I cut long straps off of full hides that I keep here in my shop that look just like this. From here, I take a pencil and I draw all of these patterns and designs directly onto this leather like that. And then I take this swivel knife, carve the designs, and then these are just some of the tools that I have here in my shop that I will use to then essentially chisel and hammer all of these patterns into these belts like that which is again why it's not a hundred percent consistent there's going to be impurities in this belt which in my opinion at the end of the day do make it a lot cooler because it isn't just perfect there are going to be human errors that come along with this and because as you can tell this leather has some dye work on it i go through with paint brushes and hand finish this leather too the only part of my process on these belts that isn't done by hand is the stitching. I do have a sewing machine that I run my belts through, but other than that, the edges, the finish work, the tool work, it's all handmade, which is obviously a very big difference when you compare it to just embossing leather or rolling a continuous pattern along a cheap piece of leather. The lifespan on a belt like this ultimately comes down to how often it's used, how well it's taken care of. Even if you put these belts through the ringer, I would say you're still going to get at least five to ten years of use out of it, if not more. And I have personally seen belts that have been really well taken care of that are decades old. If you take care of this, it's built to last. It could potentially last an entire lifetime, especially if you're not wearing it all the time. If it's just a special occasions type belt, then you got to take all of that stuff into consideration. Just for reference, I wanted to put my everyday belt that I built almost two years ago and I've been wearing almost every single day for the past two years compared to these brand new, never worn belts. And obviously, your hips aren't perfectly straight so when you wear a belt it will start to mold to your hips so that's why it has that little bitty wonk right there in the middle and I wouldn't say that that belt has been put through the ringer but I have wore it in a lot of different conditions it's been in the rain the mud the snow I've wore it while I've been working outside I've been on quite a few bulls while wearing it so it has been used pretty heavily it's a rough out belt so technically that is the inside of the leather which is why it looks all hairy like that that's just a style that i like so that's what i wear every day if you take a close look at this belt you can tell that it's still in really good shape as far as functionality goes the edges are rough there's some little tan lines from my belt loops this leather's darkened up from being in the sun obviously the lacing on the buck stitch is still holding strong and i like to think i still got quite a few years of use out of this bad boy now as far as stretch goes, because you always hear that leather will stretch, I'm going to show you how much this belt has stretched, being that I've wore it almost every single day for the past two years. I built this belt to be 36 inches from the fold back here to the center hole. If you get this almost as straight as it was when it was built, that's still 36 inches right there on the center hole. So there hasn't been hardly any stretch at all in this belt. So looking at these belts side by side, you can definitely tell the difference on the tooling designs on how hand tooled is much different than embossed leather. This belt is probably half the thickness of this belt that I built. This handmade belt has a lot more body and structure to it, like I mentioned. That is heavily due to it being double layered but even a single layered belt in around anywhere from seven to ten ounces in thickness is going to have a lot more body to it than this very thin piece of cheap leather i hope that helped explain or clarify the differences between this belt and this belt this topic is really easy to get off in the weeds on so if there's something that you think i didn't cover or i didn't explain very well then drop that in the comments and i'll do my best to answer any questions if you have any future video ideas, please let me know that as well. I'm trying to make as much content as I can for you guys. I have a few other things in the works 
Thank you for tuning in. Please like this video and go subscribe to the channel. But until next time, we'll see you.